Hello, and thank you for joining us. Cannoli are one of Italy's most iconic desserts, and today we're going to demonstrate just how easy they are to make at home. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about cannoli themselves. You might hear people say, cannolis. That's not a word. The word cannoli is already plural. If you say cannolis or raviolis, it's like saying dogses or spoonses. If you have just one, it's a cannolo. If there's more than one, say cannoli. While the decadent tree is often associated with Italy in general, like many Italian dishes, cannoli originate in a specific region, in this case, the island of Sicily. Cannoli are an ancient dessert. They first appeared sometime between the year 827 and 1091 AD. Some believe that a group of nuns are responsible for the dessert's creation, while others claim that cannoli were born in the harem. Whatever the case, certain ingredients in the dessert, namely sugar and citrus, were introduced to Sicily during the period of Arab rule. The Spanish, meanwhile, brought chocolate to the island, and the Greeks popularized pistachios. Originally, cannoli were eaten during Carnavale, but now they are enjoyed year-round. Cannoli means little tube in Italian. It comes from the word canna, meaning cane, as in sugar cane. Originally, the dough that forms a dessert's crunchy shell was wrapped around pieces of sugar cane in order to keep its tubular form before being placed in hot oil to fry. You'll find cannoli filled with custard, pudding, whipped cream, and mascarpone cheese. But traditional cannoli are prepared with fresh ricotta, made from either sheep's milk or cow's milk, and sugar. Let's get started. If you would like to make the cannoli shells from scratch, we've included a recipe and instructions. Today, we're going to be using shells that we purchased at a local Italian-American grocery store that were imported from Italy. So the night before you're going to make cannoli, what you're going to do is take a fine mesh sieve, such as this, and line it with cheesecloth. And what you're going to do is you're going to place about four cups of whole milk ricotta inside of the uh, colander or the sieve, and you're going to wrap it up as such and place it on top of a bowl and then place a, something heavy on top of it and then just place it in the fridge overnight. Then the next morning you're going to notice that uh, inside the bowl is a lot of liquid. Um, the ricotta that you find in the United States has a lot more moisture in it than um, what uh, is uh, typical for Italian ricotta. And moisture is not uh, your friend when it comes to making cannoli. So it's really important that you um, do not skip this step uh, because what you want is uh, the ricotta to be as dry as possible. Like this, see how it's kind of crumbly? All right, so I put the ricotta in the bowl. Now I'm going to take about uh, three quarters cup of powdered sugar and you do want to use powdered sugar or uh, confectioner sugar, uh, not granulated sugar, not ordinary table sugar. A lot of recipes will have um, quite a bit more sugar. Uh, I don't like a ricotta that's cloyingly sweet, and uh, so I start with less sugar, and if you want to add more, of course, you're welcome to. Now, we don't want to beat the ricotta. Uh, we just want to incorporate the sugar into the, the cheese. Next, we're going to add about half a cup of uh, candied fruit. This is a mixture of cherries and orange. Uh, we're also going to take about a teaspoon or so of vanilla paste. You can use vanilla extract if you want. Again, liquid is not the friend of cannoli. That's why I'm using vanilla paste. And we're going to mix this together. And uh, then next, we're going to add about half a cup of finely chopped chocolate. You can use uh, chocolate chips. Mini chocolate chips work very well. So I'm going to add that. 
So once you have mixed all the ingredients together, this is basically what it's going to look like. I like to place the cannoli filling into the refrigerator and just let the, um, all the flavors kind of get to know each other a little bit. Then what we're going to do is take a pastry bag. And if you don't have a pastry bag, no problem. You can grab an ordinary uh, zipper bag, kind of fold it down. And what you're going to do is spoon the ricotta filling or the cannoli filling into the bag like this. You're going to try to get it into kind of one corner of the bag. One thing that you want to remember is that uh, you don't want to fill the cannoli before you're ready to eat them. Um, you'll notice that it takes only you know, a few minutes to fill quite a number of cannoli. Cannoli uh, is that perfect kind of balance be between crunchy and creamy. And if you fill them too far in advance of eating them, you're going to end up with soggy cannoli. And nobody likes soggy cannoli. And you fill one side and then fill the other side. All you do is grab each end, dip it into your crushed pistachios, your crushed chocolate, grab a couple cherries, Place them on each end and the combination of the three on a plate looks really pretty. So final step before serving is you're going to take a little bit of powdered sugar and just lightly dust the cannoli and here's our final product. We hope that you'll share with us uh, some images of your final product and that you'll join us again for cooking with the IMLA. Thanks so much. See you soon.